In this video, we're going to talk about special cases of factoring and the formulas that you need to know. So the first form is a difference of perfect square. If you have the form a squared minus b squared, you can use the formula a plus b times a minus b. The next one, if you have a perfect square trinomial in the form of a squared plus 2ab, plus b squared. This is equal to a plus b squared. Now you can also have another perfect square trinomial in this form a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. In that case this is equal to a minus b squared. Now there are some other forms that you need to be aware of. Another one is the sum of perfect cubes. This is equal to a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. Another one is a cubed minus b to the third. This is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So let's work on some examples. Let's begin with the difference of perfect squares. So let's say if we have x squared minus 16. So using the formula a squared minus b squared, this is equal to uh, a plus b times a minus b. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 16 is 4. And one of them is going to be plus, the other is minus. So that's how you can factor x squared minus 16. Try this one. x squared minus 49. So it's going to be x plus 7 times x minus 7. Now what about 25 x squared minus 64? So what is the square root of 25 x squared? The square root of it is going to be 5x. And the square root of 64 is 8. So the answer is 5x plus 8 and 5x minus 8. Now try this one. 64 x squared minus 121 y squared. The square root of 64 x squared is 8x. The square root of 121 y squared is 11y. And it's going to be plus and minus. So it's 8x plus 11y times 8x minus 11y. Now what about this expression? x squared plus 10x plus 25. Now when you see a trinomial, you need to know if it's a perfect square trinomial and if you can use the formula. So here's what you need to do to tell if it's a perfect square trinomial. Take the square root of the leading coefficient and of the constant term and then multiply the two numbers. And this result, which is 5, notice that it's half of 10. If you get that, then it's a perfect square trinomial. So we know the equation is uh, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And that's equal to a plus b squared. So notice that a squared is equal to x squared, which means that a is x, and 25 is b squared. Therefore, b is the square root of 25, or simply 5. So then all you need to do is replace a and b. So it's going to be x plus 5 squared. So that's how you can factor a perfect square trinomial. Let's try another example. y squared minus 8y plus 16. 
So this is another perfect square trinomial. So we know a squared is equal to y squared, and b squared is 16, which means a is y, and b is equal to 4. So a plus b squared is therefore equal to y plus 4 squared. So this is how you can factor that particular perfect square trinomial. Try this one. 9a squared plus 24a plus 16. So is it a perfect square trinomial? The square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 16 is 4. And if we multiply 3 times 4, this is equal to 12. And 12 is half of 24, which means it's a perfect square trinomial. So a squared is 9a squared. So a is therefore 3a. b squared is 16. So b is equal to 4. So using the form a plus b squared, it's going to be 3a plus 4 squared. So that's how you can factor this trinomial. Now what about this example, x cubed plus 8? So notice that we have a sum of cubes. So we can use this formula, a to the third plus b to the third, which is a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So we can see that a to the third is the same as x to the third. Therefore, a is equal to x. b to the third is equal to 8. And the cube root of 8 is 2, so b is equal to 2. So this is going to be x plus 2. a squared is going to be x squared. ab is x times 2, which is 2x. And b squared is 2 squared, which is 2 times 2, that's 4. So that's how we can factor x cubed plus 8. So let's try another example. Try this one. Let's say if we have 27x cubed plus 64, or just 64. Try that. So the cube root of 27 is 3, and the cube root of x to the third is x. So if a to the third is 27x cubed, a is 3x. b to the third is 64, and the cube root of 64 is 4. So a plus b is 3x plus 4. a squared, that's 3x times 3x, which is 9x squared. a b, 3x times 4, that's 12x. And b squared, 4 times 4, is 16. So this is the answer. Now let's work on some examples using the difference of cubes formula. So let's write it first. a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So let's say if we have the expression 16x to the third minus 54. Notice that we can't really take the cube root of 16. It's not an integer. And we can't do the same for 54. However, there is a GCF. The greatest common factor of 16 and 54 is 2. So if we take out a 2, we're going to have 8x cubed minus 27. 8 and 27 are perfect cubes. We could take the cube root of 8 and 27. So therefore, a to the third will be equivalent to 8x cubed, and b to the third is 27. So the cube root of 8 is 2 and the cube root of 27 is 3. So a minus b is 2x minus 3. Let's not forget the 2 in front. a squared is going to be 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared. a b, 2x times 3, so that's going to be plus 6x. b squared, 3 times 3 is 9. So this is the final answer.
Now there's one more example I think we should try, and it's this one. 125x cubed minus 216 y to the ninth. So we can see that a cubed is 125x cubed, and the cube root of 125 is 5. The cube root of x cubed is simply x to the first power. b to the third is 216 y to the ninth. So b is the cube root of 216 is 6 because 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. To find the cube root of y to the ninth, this is the same as y to the 9 over 3, which is simply 3. So b is 6y cubed. So according to the formula, it's going to be a minus b, 5x minus 6y to the third times a squared. 5x times 5x is 25x squared. a, b, 5 times 6 is 30, and then x, y cubed. b squared is 6 times 6, which is 36. y cubed times y cubed is y to the 6th power. You have to add 3 and 3 to get 6. So this is the answer.